The global economic slowdown continues. We have seen positive changes in some indicators, downward trends in others. But overall, it's very clear that printing money doesn't offer an appropriate solution to the madness. You can't sprinkle money from a helicopter to somehow stimulate real economic growth. If that was the case, all you would need to do is to give money directly to the people quadrillions a day. But of course, we can't do that. We've read the history. We know the effects. Central bank intervention is a mess. It's only making matters worse and will continue to be a problem since investors have been begging for them to intervene as much as possible. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Are you partying like it's 1999? Well, some people are, that's for sure. We're going to look at some of the statistics today that are truly impressive, or perhaps you would use the word ridiculous. I'm going to give you some data all across the board. We're going to look at what's happening in the United States. We're going to look at some global numbers as well. I want to talk about India. I have a lot of subscribers in India. Found a few charts for you. We're going to look at crude oil, everything in between. Let's get into it right away. The markets have shook off any bad news. No need to worry. The VIX index has been pushed under 18. The United States has nothing to worry about whatsoever. It's time to buy the dip. Wall Street braces for more volatility ahead. It could go up huge or it could go down huge. Well, that's some reassuring advice. That's for sure. Take a look at this, this article here, US leading indicators show weakness, but no recession. What's interesting about this article is that it's from May 19th, but that's 2008. All right. So we obviously know now that by this point, there was already a recession fully on. And yet they were still saying, don't worry about it. Nothing to see here at the bottom. These data certainly reflect a weak economy, but not one in recession. Moreover, the small increases in the leading index in both March and again in April could be a signal that the economy may not weaken further. Nothing to worry about. Unfortunately, things were much worse than what they were saying. Yes, you can point to these different indicators that show strength. Maybe it's the jobs numbers. Maybe it's the unemployment rate. And you can try to use those to justify what you believe is correct. But ultimately, anything could swipe you off your feet. Nobody expected, other than just a very few people, that something like the financial crisis of 2008 would ever happen. Look, by this time, there was already the foreclosures. There was already a subprime crisis. It was already fully on. And they didn't want to admit it. Why? Because they're worried about their advertising, because they are worried about their investment, because they are worried about the effects of it spreading around. This is the way it goes. In yesterday's trading session, you had the Shanghai Composite one day percentage change. Haven't seen this for a few years. Back in 2015, obviously, China was hit hard with their stock market. This happens to be just as significant. China central bank to inject 500 billion, the equivalent being 71 billion dollars via reverse repos on Tuesday. They're going to be intervening every single day to keep the market pushed up. They need to do this right now for obvious reasons. There is a massive and overwhelming slowdown that's taking place. It's affecting many countries today. Some are being hit harder than others. But as I always say, every domino will fall. Now, you know about the trade deal. You know about how I've covered it here on the channel before. Some people didn't like the fact that I suggested the deal wasn't all that it's cracked up to be. But I just wanted some clarification. What exactly is this all about? Well, now it turns out that China wants some flexibility. Because of the issues that are going on now that I can no longer talk about, if you want to know about that, you have to go to the community or blog section on my channel. They may not be able to meet their targets anymore, and maybe they'll be able to use a little clause to pull back on what they had promised supposedly to do. Although it was best efforts basis, although there was actually no certainty in their ability to be able to purchase all the agriculture that was supposedly laid out in this deal that was really the cornerstone of it. Now now there's a reason why they may actually be able to legitimately pull back on it and the US won't be able to say a thing. I'm going to follow it very closely and let you know what's happening. Keep your eyes on this, of course. Oil bear market deepens as OPEC talks emergency action to deal with the situation that's happening today. 
Yes, that's right. All central banks want their hand on this. OPEC just following along. We have seen that crude oil fell below $50 a barrel. I'll give you more on that in a minute. But they want to be able to cut production. I think they may actually go for it. That's a shocker to me, but it has happened previously. They want to keep the price up. Perhaps their models are showing that this is just going to continue to get worse. They don't want to go back down to the 40s and just remain there for a period of time. They'll have to cut production because there is less and less demand right now. I was happy to see that even Jim Bear Stearns Kramer told everybody you might want to hang on for a second. In the third paragraph, let's wait for a real dip, the kind we haven't had yet before we get more bullish on this market. Congratulations Jim Kramer for actually hesitating, but I'm sure it won't take much to get him back onto those bullish calls. Goldman says to keep buying the big five tech stocks because this isn't 2000. That's right. Apparently, they are more fairly valued. So you should continue to pump your money into Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, and Facebook. As I've mentioned, they account for 18% of the S&P 500's value, a combined weighting not seen since the tech bubble. I do agree that things are different today than they were 20 years ago. There's no doubt about that. I'm not denying that, I never have. But to ignore the euphoria is absolutely ridiculous. Tesla's biggest bull stampedes to a $7,000 price target? Is this warranted or is this absurd? You tell me, you know, with all of these price predictions, it's hilarious when I see it. Because you have these so-called analysts out there, they make a prediction. And let's just say that stock is at $1. And they make a prediction, it's going to be $2. Once it gets near that $2 range, or maybe when it hits that $2 range, they bring it up to $3. And then it hits that range, and then they bring it up to $4, and so on. And then an unforeseen event comes around, takes it down, it's back to $1 again. And then they start the process over again well it's gonna go to two dollars and it's gonna go to three dollars what is this it's a game that they play but what's interesting about it is that these people here that put these really bullish calls during a bull market they're the ones who get the interviews they're the ones who get the job offers but they're also the ones that are getting kicked to the side of the road when the time comes just like in 2008 Yield curve inversion redux spread between the three month and the 10 year treasuries. I have a lot of charts actually on this topic. I might do a video about it tomorrow. We'll see what happens. But just wanted to show you that this is continuing to get worse. This article here is talking about what's happening with the farmers. Obviously, you know about the bailouts, you know about the situation that had been going on and still going on today. Farmers and ranchers didn't ask to be unfairly retaliated against. Nobody's made whole from this. They'd rather have trade, not aid. And that right there is, to me, very important. They'd rather have trade, not aid. If they're in the business of farming, that's what they want to do. They don't want to get money through the government. They don't want to do it this way. They want to actually farm, produce a product that people want, that other countries might want, that institutions might want, whoever it is. And they can deal with them and they can make their business happen. That's why they're in business. But that's not the way it works, unfortunately. You've been seeing it every step of the way. And of course, we know the ins and outs. I've covered it here before. I just think it's really unfortunate the way that things have unfolded. An unusual turn of events with the PMIs. If you look here, what you're going to see is quite the opposite of what we've been noting over the past several months. The ISM numbers, all right? Now, there's two different sources here. So we're getting the ISM numbers, and essentially, this has been trending down from 2018 all the way to the end of 2019. But the new numbers have shown that they had really, really beat expectations. It was supposed to come down, still showing weakness, but it's surprised to the upside. It is just above the contraction mark 50.9 showing strength in a time where I don't really think there should be that at all, was, you know, especially within January. We've seen a lot of negativity happen. And then on the opposite end, where we're looking at the market PMIs, this had been turning down as well along with the ISM data. Then it started to turn up and I was talking about this, showing you the detail about it. Then it began to turn down again and this had continued 
viewed with the most recent data again. So that's continued to slide, whereas the ISM is now going upward. So they are actually coming closer together to each other. There isn't as big of a divergence in between the two. I thought it was interesting. Wanted to bring that to you. Of course, as always, I'll give you the most recent data in future videos. Bloomberg's Commodity Index has absolutely nosedived since the beginning of the year. We've got copper down, we've got oil down, everything seems to be falling, particularly those industrial type commodities, namely oil. Speaking of oil, you could see right here on the left hand side, WTI and Brent were both up in this particular trading session. But if I show you what's going on, let's say over the last month, clearly there is some sustained weakness taking place. WTI I actually dipped below 50. That's very weak. When you see what had happened over the last couple months, there is this constant and never ending repeated slowdown that's showing up in all these different statistics. Britain's productivity decline is the worst in 250 years. I can't believe I read that stat, but it's right here out of Bloomberg. There's a chart that goes along with that. There's some more data in here. I would actually like to do a full breakdown of what's happening inside the UK in the next little while. Hopefully I'll get a bunch of data. I'll put it together and do a full analysis of it. So stay tuned for that. Now this is talking about Lebanon. Companies are closing and restaurants are half empty, but in the gloom of Lebanon's worst economic crisis in decades, luxury jewelers, supercar dealerships, and art galleries are doing brisk business. Now why in the world would that be the case? Well, this is something that I've talked about before and I even mentioned it in my first book. Check this out. Worried that their life savings might vanish with the collapse of the banking sector, some Lebanese are siphoning cash from their accounts and buying the most expensive goods that they can get their hands on. You have to understand what's happening here. The currency is being devalued. There's capital controls. So what do the people do? Well, whatever they can do, they take the money out and they spend it. They convert the cash, the worthless paper or digital currency and convert it into something, whatever that is, because they know the price of it is going to be higher tomorrow. In an inflationary period or in a situation where things go underground, it's much better to hold on to assets. Assets. The assets can come in any form. When the paper loses value so dramatically, even something as a car or a computer, an iPhone even, jewelry perhaps, it could come from anywhere. And obviously some of those things are better investments than others. But this is what people do. We've witnessed and documented this all the way back. It's the same thing every single time. Of course, everybody's going to have to deal with this at some point. So it's better to be prepared it's better to know what's going to happen before it hits. Now for my friends in India, always getting requests to pull up some info on India. I've been warning about the economic slowdown in India. While some were denying it, now everybody's understanding what's happening. So I want to thank all those who had been with me and agreed with me on the data I was showing. The Prime Minister's government is dealing with the country's worst slowdown in a decade with falling employment, consumption, and investment ratcheting up pressure to revive growth. The growth will be the weakest pace since the global financial crisis 2008-2009, 5% growth. Now you might think, well, 5% growth, that's great. But for India, that's actually quite slow. There's more details in the article out of Reuters if you want to check it out. I have three charts here. You can see the GDP peaking out right around 2016 or so, and it seems to be declining ever since. Looking at the industrial production that has moved into a contraction as well. This really is no different than what we're seeing in other countries around the world, whether that's China, whether that's the US, and don't even get me started on Europe. And these are the business expectations looking weak as well. They haven't been this bad since the financial crisis and doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. The channel is certainly being targeted, so I want to thank each and every one of you for your support. I want to thank all of you for your comments that you made on the post on my community section. Thank you very much for that. Really appreciate each and every one of you. If you're interested in learning about e-commerce, if you want to know about Amazon, I created a free e-course for my subscribers, step-by-step, -step, teaching you everything you need to know, the AmazonGPS.com.
If you want to know about the economic history, if you want to understand the four asset classes, top to bottom, these two books have everything that you need. Very easy to understand. No jargon, none of that stuff. Check it out. Link in description. If you want the audiobook, themoneygps.com. You want the how to and the solutions. I've got hours and hours of content here. You can pick through this playlist. It's got what you need. Click on it and I'll see you there.